With over 37 models that can be used around the world, our family of EMP protection devices installs easily in minutes. Being employed this year by federal organizations and electrical companies, the EMP Shield has been tested at Keystone Compliance, a federally approved DOD testing facility. Also serving as one of the world's fastest whole home surge protection devices working in less than one nanosecond, the EMP Shield will protect against electromagnetic pulses, coronal mass ejections, lightning, and all forms of power surges. Proven to withstand more than 40 EMP strikes with zero degradation, the EMP Shield is also one of the world's strongest surge protectors, capable of withstanding over 100,000 amps. Hey guys, it's Pastor Anthony here with your Daily Excellence. Thank you guys for uh, so much for coming on this evening and being part of our uh, broadcast tonight. Of course, we are coming on, not uh, live, but we're coming on as a premiere this evening, uh, just because it is, unfortunately, Halloween night, so I'm going to be home with my family uh, just for safety. But speaking of that, just remember that today is actually uh, Reformation Day. It was the day that Martin Luther went and nailed the thesis on the cathedral doors, and that's how we were able to uh, become, uh, you know, the, the uh, church that we are today was by that one act uh, alone. And so uh, that's the real celebration of the day. So if you get a chance to think about it, maybe do some research on Martin Luther King, or not Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther. Uh, that would be Martin Luther. That'd be a great thing to do there. So, uh, but yeah, we're gonna bring uh, Brother Joseph on from Revelation Station in just a moment. We're gonna have a, a great video with him. Uh, we're going to take you through his uh, channel. He's going to show us some things over there, and we're going to get into a conversation about end-time prophecy and just kind of see where things go uh, for the next 45 minutes, hour or so. But before we get into all that, please uh, like, share this video, uh, give us a thumbs up, do all those wonderful things and help get the algorithms going on our uh, behalf here. And just remember, you know, when me and uh, Joseph get to talking, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, end times prophecy, you know, uh, he may have a different idea. I may have a different idea. There's going to be thousands of you guys that are going to watch this. Chances are there's going to be thousands of different op of opinions and ideas and things like that. So please be respectful uh, of any ideas or interpretation. Just realize that we're just kind of a think tank tonight. Uh, we're just going to be given our imp interpretation of, of things and hypotheses and ideas uh, with what the Word of God says. Uh, but in all actuality, a lot of us, there's things that we may have right. There's going to be things that we have wrong, okay? And so just kind of keep that in mind. If you have your own opinion, that's great. You can respectfully put it uh, in the chat room there. But if you, uh, you know, get angry and start putting things in all caps, my moderators uh, have permission to remove that comment. And if it gets too nasty, they can just remove you. Uh, from the channel. I do give my moderators the ability to do that. And so, but I'm hoping tonight we're not able to do that. We're able to keep it classy, be family tonight, be brothers and sisters in Christ. And so uh, we'll do those things. Of course, make sure you check us out tomorrow night. We're going to be live uh, here at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time with uh, Pastor Talk. Uh, that's with myself and my wife. We'll be on tomorrow night. New uh, topic of discussion coming up for the month of October. And so we'll announce that tomorrow night. And of course, if you have prayer requests, we would like to pray with you online tomorrow evening. And so make sure you're a part of that. Of course, we got Mike from COT. Uh, his premieres will be on this weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 9 Central. And so you can be a part of the chat room and the premieres that we have going on with that. All right. And some of you may be wondering, why, Pastor Anthony, do you have a black eye? Because my uh, my son was helping me unload a washing machine out of the back of my truck, and he dropped it, and the washing machine hit my face. So that's what happened there. It was a fun way to start off my Sunday morning. Um, but anyway, I digress from the point. So anyway, with no further ado, keep my intro short this time around. Brother Joseph says you should keep it at three minutes. I did three minutes and 45 seconds. It's about as good as I can do. So anyway, with, with no other uh, further ado, we're going to bring on Brother Joseph. And there he is from Revelation Station. 
Thank you so much for coming on tonight and being a part of our broadcast. First time having you on tonight. Well, thank you for having me, Anthony. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you on with us tonight. And so uh, just to kind of warm up the viewers and, and uh, everybody here tonight, why don't you kind of give everyone a little bit of a background of uh, – uh, who you are, how you start a Revelation Station, and then we'll just kind of go from there. And you let me know uh, when you're ready for me to put up your channel, and we'll we'll walk through it together. I'd be happy to. Okay, well, uh, first off, my name is Joseph. I am the creator of Revelation Station. Uh, hopefully, I think a lot of your um, subscriber base it probably is the same as mine. I'm, I think we share a lot of subscribers, but... Uh, so I've been um, on YouTube for a little over 10 years now. Uh, the current channel I have, Revelation Station, is actually the second rendition of my channel. My first channel was actually um, deleted in 2019. Uh, I restarted it um, shortly thereafter, and uh, I've been kind of building back up since then. Um, I kind of started off as like a natural disaster movie edit type channel and it kind of morphed into what it is today which is like a lot of uh cinematic uh short cinematic biblically bi biblically inspired uh films uh with a cinematic twist to it um so uh you know i i was just always really enthralled with uh bible prophecy uh really since you know maybe i turned 20 years old i'm 39 right now so um for probably about just uh, about the past 20 years or so when I hit 20 I just you know my life changed rather quickly you know I went from being a wild child to a, a Christ child real quick even though I've been a I would consider myself a believer my whole life but around 1920 that's when I really you know gave my life to the Lord and really started walking the straight and narrow and ever since then it's just been I've been enthralled with Bible prophecy you know trying to learn everything I can uh, the late Chuck Missler was probably my favorite uh, Bible teacher. Um, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from a lot of the other greats that are out there. And um, a lot of their uh, teachings inspired me to do my own research. And then I kind of mixed in with my own talents with video editing and uh, Bible prophecy. I just kind of put the two together and I kind of built my channel into what it is today. Awesome. Well, I know for sure. Uh, I personally love your channel, uh, and I've watched uh, several videos on there. I've even shared uh, some of the videos with our youth group that I, I work with. I work with a, a I work with a couple group, couple adolescent groups, and so I know like the uh, the uh, Meshach and Abednego and the Fiery Furnace. We've shared that video. Yep. Uh, I've shown the uh, the Samson video to two different groups. Uh, that that video, everybody was just like. Uh, and of course, I've watched uh, your um, videos on the uh, tri your tribulation videos and pre-tribulation videos uh, several times. And so I've watched quite a few videos. And I know that you just did uh, a couple of um, videos just here recently. And so, uh, uh, you know, if you want to talk about that, you can um, and maybe explain a little bit of your channel. And I'll, I'll go ahead and take the viewers on over there if you're ready for that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um... Yeah, my channel's kind of broken down into like maybe about four separate playlists. Um, of course, it you know kind of just became this over time. But um, I have the Revelation Station playlist. I have the Bible series playlist, the Messiah series playlist, and the Great Tribulation series playlist. Now, a lot of the um, videos that are in the Revelation Station, my, my general playlist, I call that my classics. A lot of those are older. Those are from probably pre-2018 uh, where I made those. Like, for instance, uh, I have a video called Creator. Um, I have another video called 6,000. Uh, one called The Last Days. Uh, one called Revelation. One called Rapture. Uh, these videos I made pre-2018. Of course, I've edited them you know, repeatedly over time since then to make them where they are today. Um, but probably my most famous uh, to date thing where where people are really in, enthralled in is my Great Tribulation series. So um, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. But um, just so you know, um, 
the um, the other two series, the Bible series, is basically from uh, the book of Genesis to roughly, uh, I would say, the time of David. Uh, a lot of the stories, you know, the big highlighted stories that are in the Bible. I try to make a highlight video for each one of those. Uh, for instance, like you said, Samson, I have Into the Fire, I have Daniel. A lot of these scenes that I have in there are, were taken from the actual movie, uh, the, the series, the Bible series. Um, a lot of uh, the scenes were also from uh, the Son of God movie. In fact, uh, the Messiah series that I did, I would say probably like 80% of the scenes I used from that was from the movie, The Son of God. Um, so just, uh, but they're all, they're all significantly edited in a way that uh, I try to summarize short stories to kind of deliver them in a, in a package to people that is entertaining and also insightful but can also, you know, you know, really um, inspire people. Uh, so that's what I what I consider myself. I consider myself like a faith builder. Like my whole ministry is focused on charging up, you know, the soldiers of Christ, so to speak. So uh, it's very important to me. You know, that, that's right. And so we're. Uh, I was just showing some of the. Uh, videos to uh, or some of your channel to everybody and kind of follow along there and so uh if you want to uh kind of just let everybody know what maybe some of the new videos that you have just done um uh, just recently on your channel right, right. okay well so recently um you know i took about a six month break uh, i didn't do uh, basically any videos because i had just finished up the great tribulation series which by the way was a almost five year project of mine. Uh, so I didn't have, my computer was really slow. I just got a recent computer and I uh, just finished up the trailers. So I made a trailer for each of my series. So I, I made the Messiah series trailer, the Bible series trailer, and the Great Tribulation series trailer. So these are like three or four minute videos, very impactful cin cinematic structure to them. Uh, to try to draw interest to the series videos that I've already created. Um, and, you know, I may edit some over time, make them better, you know, as, you know, I get enlightened about something else or, mm -hmm. or I want to change it, make it better. So, you know, I leave it open to to change them in the future or to make them better. Um, so it that's just, I, I just, that's kind of the structure uh, that I have my channel set up as of now. So that I can, you know, update them later if I wanted to, you know, if new movie scenes come out that are cooler and I want to put them in, I could just make a new rendition of the same thing. Like, for instance, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, that was one of my most famous uh, little six, seven minute clips that I did. Very impactful. I took scenes from the Pompeii movie, you know, cut them in there, put some really good music. That that one had, you know, millions of views the first time around. Now they've only got a few thousand, you know, trying to build it back up ever since my channel was deleted. But, uh, you, you know, some of those scenes, you know, they're just, you know, you can take a, a volcano scene for Pompeii, cut it and edit it, make it look like, hey, you, this is Sodom and Gomorrah. It's like basically the same thing. And, of course, I use my uh, my creative flares to do that. So. Uh, there's just a lot of interesting uh, things you can do with movie editing to make things look like something else. Right. Well, that's really awesome. And uh, I know, like I said, I know I personally have uh, enjoyed your videos over there. And so uh, for those guys that are watching, of course, on our main channel on uh, Daily Excellence, if you just uh, head over to, um, well, I'm trying to get my, the, Try to find my channel actually. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. I'm gonna get there, I promise. So, anyway, uh, when you're done watching this, if you guys want to head over to uh, the Daily Excellence uh, YouTube channel and just go down uh, to where we have featured channels, uh, you will see Revelation Station uh, right there. Uh, you have 157,000 subscribers. You guys can go over there and check him out over on that channel subscribe over there and uh get yourself some uh popcorn 
uh, and have a fun full night, couple nights of just watching a lot of those videos. Uh, and of course, uh, we look forward to some of the new things that you got coming out now that you've got your new computer and things like that. So I know I'm personally looking forward to uh, what you create next over there. So, but uh, moving forward from from um, that, I want to get into a conversation with you uh, based on some of your videos uh, that you have made uh, about uh, what you think concerning end time prophecy. And so uh, I'll start with this question and we'll see where we go from here. But in your personal opinion, Joseph, uh, a lot of people, especially right now with things that are going on in Israel and with uh, uh, Lebanon and uh, Hezbollah and Hamas and Iran and Jordan and uh, Yemen and Russia and Ukraine and, excuse me, uh, all these other places, Egypt, um, with all these end time signs, I should say, that are around us. Where do you think, in your personal opinion, uh, we are in the biblical timeline? I've asked, I've asked every guest that I've brought on this, so there's no real uh, right or wrong answer. This is just uh, your opinion. I Well, the short answer would be close. Close. Um, but perhaps not as close as most people would think. Mm -hmm. um, so I, in my mind, um, I think we're roughly within 10 to 20 years of the return of the Lord to the earth. Um, I have some dates that I, you know, am strongly, you know, that I really feel could be the time frame. Uh, those dates would be, I'll just say, I, I really think the time frame from 2029 to 2032 on to 2036 is like a high, uh, you know, high probability in my mind. And, you know, there's reasons why I believe that. Um, but do I think it's tomorrow? No. I still think that there's still a lot of things that need to happen. Uh, prophetically before uh, some of the, the larger events come on the scene. Now we're absolutely, I think we're seeing some of the, you know, the birth pangs to that. Um, but are we at the main event yet? Not quite. Uh, I think there's uh, some things economically that need to manifest uh, to bring in the mark of the beast system, uh, you know, the catchless system. Uh, those things take time to happen. Um, I think also some of the geographical issues with the current modern state of Israel pose an issue. For instance, they don't have the Temple Mount. Um, the, the Jordanians control the Temple Mount from what I last uh, think about that. So um, I think that they need to at least regain a portion of the temple mount or the entire temple mount in order for a new temple to be built i am literal i do i am a literalist in that fact i do think a literal third temple will be built i think a literal man who aka the antichrist will actually go in there defile it and you know start off the three and a half year great tribulation so um uh just a little backtrack from that so the, the final series, the Great Tribulation series, which is my most, uh, I think, well-known, um, it's broken up into uh, the time of the end is the, the introduction video. I, I have the seven seals, uh, one through four. There's a four part to the seven seals. The seven trumpets videos goes on to the Great Harvest. Um, and then a couple others. I forget the name at the moment. But anyways, that series that I made, is a fictional series uh, using movie scenes. You know, it's very fantastical. Um, the reason I did that is I, I based that movie I made, that project, off of biblical prophecy to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. Now, absolutely, I don't know everything that's going to happen, but I have my ideas of how it could possibly happen. So a lot of what I think could happen, I actually put into that movie. Um, more specifically, like uh, you're saying, like the things with Hamas and Hezbollah, I would challenge people to watch the Seven Seals Part One and see what I actually put in there in that first uh, dramatized scene 
with uh, the war that has taken place. It's basically, in my mind, a precursor to World War III, which is kind of like what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. And it does involve Hamas and Hezbollah, those who are in control of the Gaza Strip, and those uh, Hezbollah is actually in Lebanon. So uh, I do think that they're kind of be coming in on Jerusalem at all sides. <clears throat> and this is the spark that ignites a greater war, World War III. But there's a few things that I, I'll definitely get into in a minute as to how I think that could happen. But are, are we there um, completely? No. Uh, but my first, getting back to when, when I think the end is, uh, my first choice would be 2029 to 2032. That would be my first choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it happens before that. Um, there's a great teacher named Mark Biltz. I don't know if you've heard of Mark Biltz. Uh, he he goes through a lot of the uh, Shemitah cycle um, reasoning behind uh, when the tribulation could possibly start. It could either start here and here. And he, you know, I'm not a biblical scholar to the effect of this man, but he he really outlines a great reasoning as to the Shemitah cycles, you know, would be the theoretical start to a tribulation period. And the next one doesn't theoretically start until the year 2029. Mm -hmm. But that lines up with my view of the scripture um, to Hosea 6.12. Hosea 6.12 is something to the effect of, um, after two days, I'll revive you, and after three days, I'll raise you up. I don't know if you're familiar with that scripture. Mm-hmm. So two days, in my mind, could be 2,000-year period. 2,000 years from when? And I think perhaps the resurrection, the first resurrection of Jesus Christ, which would happen roughly in 32 AD, extrapolate 2,000 years later, I think a good time frame for his return would be 2032 AD. But Again, that's just my first my first guess as when it could be. It could be well beyond that. Maybe it could happen before that. You know, I'm open to other people's ideas. You know, where they th- when they think it's going to happen, I'm all for it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I, I tend to uh, on that particular subject. People have asked me that, and uh, I, I don't buy into the. Uh, we're in the tribulational period, uh, the seven years now. Um, no, I just not that at all. Um, and I've heard some, I, you know, I've heard some decent arguments uh, concerning it. But I, there's just like, like you've said, there's certain things that have not happened yet. And I, and I think one of those is I personally believe that we will see the third temple built in our time, in our time before the removal of the church. Um, I personally believe that what we are in is what Jesus was telling the disciples in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and that these are the days of sorrows. Um, that I believe that's where we're right smack in the middle of it. Um, you know, uh, in that season that we're in, we're seeing all the signs and distress of nations, you know, the complexities of everything. Uh, I think we're entering that period where Jerusalem becomes a trembling cup, uh, which um, according to that scripture, does begin to open the door for us moving into that closer to a tribulational period. Uh, but then again, it's kind of like this because in our own mindset, especially here in America, uh, we like to have everything in chronological order. And we expect, well, this has happened with well, the next thing. It's like a checklist. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily work with it because we don't know how much time is going to pass from one event to the next event, you know, uh, you know, how long is Jerusalem going to be a trembling cup? Well, that season could last for five or 10 years. Uh, but we do know that it will lead us to the tribulational period because scripture tells us that, but how long, you know, is it, is it, is it do we tremble for three days and then we move into the tribulations or does it last for five to 10 years? Then we move into that, uh, you know, when the third temple gets built, uh, how long, is that temple there before we begin to see the Antichrist come about? Uh, you know, so there is a time table, and that's why Scripture tells us that no man knows the hour or the time that the Son of Man returns. Uh, and then <clears throat> there's that aspect. And then you have to look at this too. When back in 1948, when Israel became a state again, the Jewish people had their home. That was a major 
end times prophecy, right? And so, uh, and people at that time, man, they thought the rapture was coming. I mean, you hear stories that people sold all their belongings. They were standing on their roof of their homes waiting for the rapture to come, but it didn't come. But it doesn't necessarily, but it doesn't negate the fact that it was an end times prophecy of the last days, but we just don't know how much time is in between each event. And so that's why, like, for me personally, I'm very careful uh, not to say, well, this is going to happen here, this or that, because I don't know what the time frame is. I'm just like, I can see the figs are dropping off the tree, all right? And so I know that the season has changed and that this is the time that we're in. Uh, and so... I do, I do agree with your assessment that uh, we, aren't, we aren't at that tribulational period yet, as some people say. Uh, I do believe there are certain things that do need to take place, and we're heading there very quickly. Uh, you mentioned um, you know, the uh, currency thing. We're in the process of that now. There, we will lose the fiat money. Uh, we will go all digital uh, using cryptocurrency technologies, the, using the... Uh, uh, oh, what's that? The uh, CBDCs, CBDCs, and the uh, I forgot what it's called. It connects all that stuff together. The technology I just had it in my blockchain. head. Blockchain technology. There you go. Uh, yep. Using using all of those things, and so that's that's being implemented now. Uh, as we right. see, every country is getting into that, and that and that will we're going to have a time uh, where we're all going to be a part of that. You know, um, and it's. We're, I, my personal opinion, I think we're going to experience the one world government. We're going to experience the one world currency. We're going to kind of experience even maybe even a period of time where there might actually be uh, kind of a utopia type situation, uh, even in the world where everything might go good just for a minute um, before the removal of the church and the Antichrist comes on. Uh, all of those things, and just gets really chaotic. And, and I say that because there's a scripture that says when they say safety, peace, and safety comes to sudden destruction. We might get to that pe- that place just for a moment in society where we actually get all this ironed out. Okay, we everybody's getting along. Everybody's you know on the same economical level. Everybody's getting their UBIs. Everybody's on that system. And it might look like, oh, you know what? This this just might work out. And then boom, okay, everything collapses and we have the Antichrist has to come to fix it. This is my personal opinion. I'm not saying that's going to happen. That's just where my thought process uh, is on that particular subject. So I know I can see you got something you want to say. So what's your thought on that? Yeah, so um, what are we really looking out for? Okay, so we, you know, like you said, Matthew 24, he gave us some signs to look for. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, famines, earthquakes in diverse places. Okay, those are very generalized terms. Mm -hmm. For me, those things are happening now. But what I really want to see, and I know some of your audience might be peeved by this, is I'm actually looking for the two witnesses. Mm -hmm. Now, that would, to me, would be the grand sign that we're almost to the end. When you see those two guys here, I mean, come on. We know, because we know Scripture— we have three and a half years till something goes down, whether that's the rapture or the resurrection, in which I believe, or something else, or maybe that's the start of the really bad part of the Great Tribulation period. That remains to be seen. Um, real quickly, when you say, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes, mm-hmm. I equate that to the moment of the death of the two witnesses and the resurrection of the two witnesses. Because according to scripture, these two witnesses, when they're here, they're going to be actually the ones implementing the judgments upon the nations. Stuff's going to be happening here, there, boom, boom, boom. And everyone's going to be blaming them Mm -hmm. that they're the cause. So when these guys get killed by the Antichrist, everyone's going to be cheering, going, finally, peace, safety. But three days later, guess what? Boom, earthquake, destruction comes, 7,000 people die during that. And that's what I think actually initiates the great tribulation period, the the last three and a half years. Like, you know, some people would think, you know, uh, that would be the midpoint, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, the the midpoint is when they die. When the two witnesses die and the resurrection happens, boom, that's the start of the great tribulation, in my opinion. So... 
that's reflected in my movie, little, you know, the Great Tribulation series that I've made. I think that's when it happens. Uh, I know other people think, oh, no, we're not going to be here for the two witnesses. We're not going to see them. That has nothing to do with us. Well, I would respectfully disagree. I think that they're here to kind of put everybody in line with each other because we got this pe people over here believe this. This guy believes this. Remember, Elijah, who is supposedly going to be one of the two witnesses, would you agree with that based on the scripture in Malachi? Well, Behold, I send Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Oh, yeah, he never died. Okay, so okay, so let's <laughs> say Elijah is one of them. Right. All right. He died. <laughs> Easy. Okay, so who came in the spirit of Elijah at Jesus' time? John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So John the Baptist, what was he doing? He was warning everybody, hey, prepare the way of the Lord. What's Elijah going to be doing at the time of the end? Hey, prepare the way of the Lord. Get your theolo the theology right, everybody. You got this right. You got this wrong. You're half right. You're half wrong. I think the two witnesses are coming to mend the giant rift in the, the believers mm -hmm. uh, and to also place judgments uh, upon the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. So I think that time frame, I think we're going to be here. And then those who are watching, we know what happens. The mm. world doesn't know. That who are these two guys? What are, I don't care what they're doing. You know, you know. Obviously, it should be a pretty, you know, you know, grandiose time of, uh, you know, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, knowledge is just getting thrust throughout the world when these two guys are here. But just think about if all these calamities are taking place, the whole. Well, not the believing world. The unbelieving world is going to be clamoring. You know, we, we hate these guys. Kill them. And when they're dead, they're going to be screaming peace and safety. And what happens after they die? That's when the destruction comes immediately. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's just an idea. Um, I do think that when the two witnesses are res. Oh. Thank you, Fro. Directed. I do think that is the right. event. Uh, am I still here? I think you're still there. All right. Yeah, we're, we're buffering there for a second. You're good. You're good. Go ahead and keep going. Okay. You're talking to witnesses. Okay. Here. So yeah. So that that time frame is when I think the rapture resurrection event actually occurs. I think that's when, boom, we're we're t we're taken out of the way, and that's when the 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 wrath really starts to fall. That's when the Antichrist, you know, maybe there's a huge event, you know, that happens when the rapture takes place. Maybe mm -hmm. there's boom, the power's out or something, you know, something that could really cause confusion to allow for this Antichrist to take over the the world at that time. Okay. So that's on that effect. Now getting into the the ec economical factor, um, you know, regarding the mark of the beast and all that. Now, you were mentioning, you know, CBDCs, the UBI. You know, I'm totally in line with that. I totally agree that's probably what's going to happen. The Most of your viewers are pretty smart, and you know the fiat system is basically a giant Ponzi scheme implemented across the world, and that dollars need to continually inflate uh, for, for, you know, nations to pay their debts, and, you know, so the debt becomes lower, they can actually afford to pay it. So there needs to be an increasing amount of money. Uh, so this system is going to end really bad. You know, the fiat system is going to abruptly end in a catastrophe. Now, is that tomorrow, a couple of years from now? I don't know. But I think the whole onset of the crypto revolution, I think it, it's right on time because it's all going to be cashless, digital, instantaneous. And I think governments around the world are already almost in a way preparing for what the inevitable is mm -hmm. and uh you know who's going to reject a cbdc when they're just giving you money directly digitally hey you got a thousand dollars you got to spend it by the end of the month or we take it away from you you know yeah. so i mean right. who's going to reject that you know only the smart people who know better right so it's uh but is that system in place now we're close Mm -hmm. But we're not there yet. Is it going? Right. It's not. It, it takes time for for these things to happen. But when the inevitable 
collapse of our current monetary system happens, I think it, you know, that system will be there, you know, relatively quickly within a few years. Right. And so, uh, yeah, I agree with you on the uh, cryptocurrency uh, digital system part of it. Uh, I will backtrack just for a second. Um, so uh, based on kind of what you were discussing about the two witnesses and three and a half years and things like that, uh, I'm one of those people, I'm kind of on the fence uh, on pre-trib and mid-trib uh, because I understand the mid-trib. Uh, it, it does make sense to me in a lot of areas. Uh, but there's one part, there's one scripture uh, that uh, that keeps me on the fence concerning the pre-trib, and it's that when the is the seven-year feast that takes place uh, in heaven for the saints that have been removed uh, during that period. And so I didn't know if you would like to, if you were aware, uh, knew about that scripture, wanted to kind of enlighten everybody on that, or where does it say there's a seven-year feast? Uh, hold on. Let me, let me pull this up because it is at the banquet meeting and I should have looked this up ahead of time. It just came to my brain as we were talking. Uh, but the, from the mid trip report perspective, you know, I kind of look at, I kind of look at the seals as being split into two different categories, one by man and one by, by wrath of God. Uh, and sort of speak. And so uh, I've always been on the fence consider concerning both of those things. Um, let's see. Seven. I'm terrible with. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I'm oh, just, no, you're I, fine. I don't believe that the, uh, the, the marriage supper of the lamb is uh, seven years long. Um, it could be, but I, I think that the marriage supper might be on earth after his return. That's one theory. Um, when he's actually dwelling in Jerusalem, uh, but I mean, you know, like like you, I, you know, I don't know. You know, I just have my theories about it. Um, but oh, man, I, yeah. It, so I'll yeah, just let it, I'll so just let it, it go with that. It makes uh, it's mentioned in Revelation nineteen seven, but it doesn't say seven. But it just says, "Let us rejoice and be glad, give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride to be made himself ready." Uh, let's see. Trying to clear this part up. Uh, let's see. Luke twenty two sixteen talks about this too. Um, so it talks about, oh my, so Luke 22 also gives a reference to, but it doesn't, it doesn't give, um, yeah, well, I mean, I agree that there's a marriage supper of the lamb. It's basically the cel it's the celebration that, you know, that it's over, you know, we right. can celebrate, it. you know, it's, um, it's a reward for the believers. Uh, for those in Christ, you know, hey, you're you're not going to have to go through this specific set of time, which I believe is only three and a half years. Yeah. So I think that's where people get get it get it messed up. Is the Great Tribulation is only three and a half years. It's not seven years. The period is seven years, but the 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 real wrath of God is three and a half. So I think that's what the wrath we're spared from is the latter half. But like I said, I'm okay with pre-trib. I, I would be more than happy for him to come right now and snatch us all away. That would be great. And I'd be like, you know what? I'm wrong. Big deal. You know, I'm just happy that you came, you know, you came and got me. Exactly. Um, if the mid-trip happens and I see the two witnesses, oh, I'm going to be expecting that, you know, third day, third, three, you know, the third day of the two, I'll be expecting it then. If it doesn't happen then, I got to be honest with you, I'd be pretty disappointed and to know that, you know, what we got to look forward to, you know, after that event. Um, so, so like here's I said, how, it's here's how they're getting it. Uh, so where that where this is coming from, it looks like it's because of Jewish custom. So there's like the wedding supper biblical times last for 
one week, okay. and seven days. Yeah, gotcha. so that's where they're getting the seven years from. They celebrate for seven days. Okay, yeah, I can, yeah, I can understand that. So that's where they're pulling that from, uh, and that, and they're using Revelation seventeen seven through nine to, I guess, pull that out. So uh, that's where that's coming from. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know why I thought it said seven years in there, but that's just one of those things. That's why I always tell people you have to study things for yourself. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of things we don't know. There's yeah. a lot of things, um, you know. You know, I'm not a biblical scholar, like I said. You know, I, I like to make you know fun little videos and extrapolate the things that I know into them to mm -hmm. you know to make something to lead people to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, but, Am I like, uh, you know, a Perry Stone or, uh, you know, one of these really great teachers I like to listen to? You know, they these guys really know a lot more than me. Yeah. And um, I do challenge some of their, you know, theologies in certain areas. Uh, but I think the we I think in when it comes down to it, it's just like, let's stop fighting about the timing of the rapture. Let's stop fighting about the timing of the tribulation. I agree. In the end, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. The The fact is. We're here now. Live. You do what you got to do until, you know, something, one of these big signs happen. Like we start, start seeing the third temple getting built. I mean, come on. You know, you're you're going to ramp yourself up a little bit like, OK, uh, it's getting right. We're getting, you know, so it could happen. But it could still be, you know, another 10, 20 years. Who knows? Maybe it won't happen. You know? That's what I it's tell people on the channel. I'm sure you've heard me. You know, I, no matter what you believe. You know, if, if you believe in pre-trib, mid-trib, even if you believe in, in post-trib, I don't know how you can, but there's people out there who do. Uh, you know, no matter what you believe, you have to be prepared spiritually for whatever is going to take place. If you believe in pre-trib, then you need to be spiritually prepared to leave uh, at a moment's notice. If you prepare, if you're mid-trib, then you need to be prepared not only to leave at a moment's notice, but also to go through uh, certain things. Uh, that you're going to have be, need to be spiritually strong for. And if you believe you're going to go through the whole thing, the wrath of God, which Scripture says we're not pointing to, uh, but if you believe you're going to go through that whole thing, then you probably need to be more prepared than the rest of us. Uh, and whatever it is, you, you just need to be uh, you need to be spiritually prepared uh, for those things. And you know, and I'm not talking about like having provisions like a, the massive ammo pile, stockpile or, uh, you know, 20 year food or anything like that. I'm talking about just being spiritually prepared, having an ear to what God's telling you to do. Uh, you know, if he tells you to go here, go there. If he tells you to say something, say something, you know, hearing the instructions from God is going to be uh, your true survival and your true ticket to however this thing is going to unfold uh, as we get closer to it. So. Uh, but uh, well, let's get, to, go, go ahead. Well, I, I want to reel one more, one more quick fact. Reel it back to oh, another sign to look for is okay. When what starts off this whole period? It's the confirming of a covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so he confirms a covenant for one week, which is seven years. And this and this event marks the start of this seven-year period. Okay, when you're th when you think of confirming of a covenant, what covenant is he confirming? It's I believe the Abrahamic covenant because that was his original covenant mm -hmm. covenant that he made with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Look back, what was God's covenant with Abraham? It was basically I give to this land here. This is your land, Abraham, and for your seed for uh, for all time. Basically, giving them the the land. Right. What's going on right now? There's a contention on the land. Whose it is? Is it Israel's land or is it the Palestinians' land? Who was here first? So I think what happens is they need to confirm the original covenant of whose land it really is. And that it was God given to Abraham in the mm -hmm. Abrahamic covenant. I have the verse here in my notes. Uh, Genesis. 12 7. Well, I think that's the 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 boundaries of the land. He basically said, This is your land from the, the Nile River to the Euphrates River, basically. I'm paraphrasing. So that was the covenant, the Abrahamic covenant. What do we have now? We have the Abraham Accords. Accords, yep. What if the Abraham Accords is the confirming of this covenant? 
that, hey, this land is Israel's, like it or not, and then these guys have to agree to it. Boom, they're confirming that covenant of Abraham. Right. Just an idea I wanted to throw out there. That's a, that, 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 that is another sign that we need to be watching out for, the confirming of that covenant. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you know, to get to that place, I think is going to uh, probably inspire quite a battle because <laughs> uh, you're going to have some folks that are not going to agree with that. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and another sign, too, that's coming up. And, oh, man, I, did, I just had it in my head uh, as we were talking about the Abraham Accords. Um, it just slipped my mind. But, um, you know, we, we look at the Ezekiel 30, you know, 38, 39 war. Uh, I think we're going to be approaching that here pretty, pretty shortly. And that brings out an interesting timetable uh, alone, too, uh, when you look at that particular story. Or look at that particular prophecy, I should say, because, and I believe, I hope I'm looking at the right one and not getting it mixed up with another one uh, in Isaiah. But uh, I believe this is the one where uh, it kind of gives the idea of a nuclear attack taking place. That's uh, Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. The plague that, this is the plague um, that will besiege those who come against Jerusalem, that their tongues will melt in their mouth, their Mm -hmm. eyes out, their eyes out. That's Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14, okay. Uh, so we have that one that I think is probably going to, we're about to see that one in my personal opinion. But then in the Ezekiel 38, 39, uh, this is the part where we see it takes what Israel seven, seven years to bury the dead uh, across the land. And many argue uh, that in that particular prophecy that we will actually see that before uh, the tribulational period. So no. you got your hand, you got your hand right oh, yeah. on that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think, okay. So what if the seven years to bury their dead is actually after the seven years? Because if you look at Zechariah 14, where it gets into that scripture about, you know, the, what they think is a nuclear exchange, you know, you know, these people are melting basically to death. Mm-hmm. Uh, whoever comes up against Jerusalem at that time. Um, you know, what if that, I I think that is actually the day of the Lord, the, the 24-hour day that Jesus actually comes back, because Zechariah 14, that's the day he sets uh, his foot on the Mount of Olives, mm-hmm. and the whole thing gets divided, and, the, you know, he provides a way of escape for those who are in Jerusalem. And that's when he comes down with a knife and starts with, a, you know, his robe is dipped in blood and all that. I think that is actually the final battle. The Zechariah 14. I think that's the end. That's the day of the Lord. That's when he comes and, you know, slaughters all the enemies that are coming up against Jerusalem. And Armageddon. Defends. Yeah, yeah. So the burning of the weapons for seven years, I think people are getting this confused. It's like, oh my gosh, they're burning for seven years. That seven years must be the tribulation period. I don't agree. I think that seven years that they're burning the weapons is actually the aftermath of the War of Armageddon. So... I think that that kind of throws some people off mm-hmm. that, you know, you know, because why are they burning weapons and the Antichrist is there? You know, the Antichrist is is there and he's taking over the city and they're he's he's allowing them to burn these weapons from this previous war. It right. just doesn't make sense to me not to, you know, think that it couldn't be an event that's that precedes the day of the Lord. Um, but in my mind, I think. A lot of these scriptures are actually pointing to one day where Jesus comes back, the second coming of Christ, where he, boom, ends it all. Okay. Yeah, I can understand that one. Uh, I remember what I was going to say, though, before I got into that. Uh, One of the things that we have to look at in Bible prophecy, too, uh, concerning Israel and uh, getting to getting to that place of the tribulational period is, and this is my personal opinion on this, is the removal of America uh, from the scene. Um, I don't think America will be involved uh, when Israel becomes trampled or in, in, in any of those wars, um, because right now, you know, you know, the example we have before us is that, you know, we are at Israel's aid, which kind of surprised me right at the moment because I didn't. 
that kind of shocked me from this administration. I'm pretty sure there's some sketchy stuff going on behind the scenes, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, we won't go into politics tonight. Uh, but uh, we will see the removal of America. And so uh, I think, I, and I know, I know people are like, oh, you're anti-American. No, it's just when you look at end times prophecy, you don't see anything really relating to us in the final moments, final stages of that. So something has happened uh, to us, you know, I mean, who knows what it could be. You know, maybe we've just been obliterated right out here. Uh, maybe, maybe we're so busy fighting our own civil war over here. We miss we miss all of Revelation over here. I mean, who knows? We're distracted, whatever it may be. But there will be a removal of us, and we're not going to be at Israel's aid when her enemies surround her. And that's one thing to that we really, to look look into as well as a sign of, okay, we just made a real big jump here. Yeah. So, um, I think that you know, with our Western mindset, we think that. Oh, America's involved in everything. Just because, you know, you grew up here, you know, you know, oh, we have to be involved. We're the greatest nation on earth, you know. The Bible is very, you know, centered around Israel and Israel's surrounding enemies. It doesn't really talk much about, you know, the Far East and Australia and South America and mm -hmm. America. So I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, my gosh, every nation on earth is going to be gathered against Jerusalem and they're going to be a huge war and everyone's going to hate them and try to kill them all at once. And it's the whole world. It's really just 10. Well, again, in my opinion, I think it's just 10 nations, 10. Uh, well, for lack of a better, Islamic nations, Arab nations that are gathered against Israel at the end times. I don't think America has anything to do with it. I think we're either severely diminished at that time, as well as a lot of the other nations of the earth. You know, I don't think all these outside nations are involved directly in this battle. In fact, I think we're kind of sidelines. And I think some of the verbiage actually alludes to that, like, hey, uh, Sheba and Didan, what are you doing here? Of course, I think, you know, that would be equated to uh, Saudi Arabia. That might be one of the sidelines players. You know, that they're there, but they're not directly involved. They're wondering what's going on. Uh, and I think America, to that effect, is either going to be severely diminished or completely out of it because there's going to be so much calamity going on at that time. People are going to be struggling to survive as it is with, with an Antichrist figure upon the earth. I don't understand his entire grasp of the whole earth as a whole. You know, I know that he's supposed to be, you know, going after those believers that are in that last time so but it's i think we really need to uh get the scope down into just the middle east mm -hmm. that's the center of all this trouble it's not in great britain it's not in china it's not in america you know it's there that's where all the trouble is okay so yeah we're probably out of it yeah we're not involved. i think i would probably even i would probably even uh uh, maybe expand that, not just America, but probably just Western civilization in general. Because uh, we seem to kind of all be, you know, us and, and, and Europe seem to be kind of facing the same issues uh, when you look at it from a political standpoint and what's taking place. Uh, we are getting, we are beginning to get a little short on time. Uh, but before we go, I do want to touch in on what your opinion of what the millennial would look like. I know you did some videos over on your channel concerning that, but if you want to take me to the next uh, five minutes there to just kind of give the audience what your thoughts and your opinion are about what it'll be like uh, with Jesus on the scene ruling uh, here on the earth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have a lot of, uh, you know, great ideas um, concerning the millennium. Um, I think, you know, not a lot of people think about it that much, um, but there are a lot of, you know, clues in Scripture about what happens. Um, for instance, uh, the last chapters of the book of Ezekiel, basically chapters 40 on, you know, Ezekiel 38 is the war. And, and then basically chapter 40 on, it talks about the millennial temple, talks about, you know, how God is basically dividing up the land of Israel at that time between the uh, the 12 tribes that are there. So it's basically he's divvying up the land over there. So 
he needs to, Jesus Christ needs to be literally here on earth to do that. And of course, the 144,000, I think, are also involved in this because they're the 12,000 12, from each tribe. Um, you know, a little equation there is, you know, Jesus had 12 disciples, right? The disciples' job was to basically teach peace and righteousness and be kind of like priests to all the world. Mm -hmm. Now, when Jesus comes back, all the world, they don't know what's going on. You know, remember, two-thirds of the earth are going to survive this tribulation, okay? Not everybody's going to take the mark of the beast and get thrown into the lake of fire, okay? A lot of people are not going to take the mark of the beast. A lot of people are going to die, but a lot of the people of the nations are not going to, they're going to survive. You know, if you extrapolate out who survives this, it's roughly like two-thirds. Two-thirds will survive, two out of three. Now, don't bank your salvation on that, of course, but uh, these 12,000 from each tribe, I believe that these are like Jesus's new disciples for the entire world. It's like, okay, I'm king. You guys, 12,000 from each tribe, here are your lands, here are your inheritance. And by the way, your job is to be a priest on the earth now. Go into all the nations and teach them, you know, the ways of the Lord. Teach them the commandments, teach them the ways of righteousness. You know, I think it's kind of like God is the king, is giving his authority over to these guys, the under 44,000. They're kind of like, you know, generals, disciples, you know, hence the reasoning for the, uh, the number 12 there. So that is uh, in the last book of Ezekiel. He's got the millennia, uh, millennial temple. A lot of interesting things uh, regarding that. By the way, in the book of Zechariah at the end, the whole plain, the whole uh, area of Jerusalem is made a plain by that earthquake, by the return of the Lord. You know, the mountains melt like wax before the face of the Lord. So there's going to be a huge geographical change in Jerusalem at the return of the Lord. Now, how many years until this millennial temple gets rebuilt? I don't know. It could take a couple of years. Remember, the river of life is now flowing from the temple. Uh, the, the waters of the earth are now healed from that temple. Um, you know, there's a stream that goes down to, uh, I believe, uh, En Gedi, which is right by the uh, Dead Sea there, and it heals, starts healing the water. Um, so the world is going to be messed up at the time of the tribulation, but it will slowly be healed. And, uh, you know, the nations will come up to Jerusalem and worship the king there. And the millennial temple is all about how God wants to design. He's going to have the singers here. He's going to have the cooks here. And, you know, it's it's all orchestrated beautifully because God is going to sit as the king of kings in Jerusalem. And he's going to rule there for a thousand years. Now, I think this is where people get messed up. People think that the millennium is all going to be, oh, fun and games. Everything's perfect. Not so. I think it's going to be really great. You know, the whole thousand years is going to be filled with peace. Remember, God rules with a rod of iron. When any, when any, some, whenever some nation, you know, starts stirring up trouble, boom, he quelches it. No more. No, no more. You're going to turn your plowshares into, or your, your spears into plowshares. You know that scripture. So it's basically... He is turning the world back into a peaceful world. Mm -hmm. And those 12,000 from each of the 144, they're out there spreading like, hey, don't do this. Because basically they're given judgment, you know, lesser judgments. Zechariah, you know, goes into great detail about that. The, the last few chapters of the book of Zechariah. Mm -hmm. So um, getting, I, I'm sorry for the amount of time I'm taking to explain this, but I don't think the millennium is going to be totally perfect. Remember, there's still death. People still die, but things are so much better. You know, people's lifespans will start expanding. Remember, Jesus Christ is literally here on earth. People are teaching him. People are teaching other people of the nations how to live appropriately, how to eat good foods, how to not, you know, but are, are the people all just going to go on forever and they're all eternal? No, I don't believe that. I believe that some of us are going to be immortal. That's the first resurrection. That's the rapture. That's you and me. That's the believers. I think that we're called to be the kings and the priests in that kingdom, and that we're going to be the ones that are going to be teaching everybody the ways of the Lord, even though they're still mortal. They didn't catch the blessing of immortal life, of, of eternal life. They're still, you know, 
working for that, so to speak, even though you don't work for your eternal life. They, we're all pointing to Jesus Christ the whole time. There he is. That's where you need to go, right there. There's the man. He's there. You can go shake his hands. You can go look at the holes in his hands because they're there. So that's what I think um, is going to happen. Of course, at the end of the thousand years, we all know that Satan is let out from his prison and he stirs up a huge rebellion and a number of the sand of the sea come up against Jerusalem once again. And it's like Gog of Magog too. It's like a second Armageddon, so to speak. Right. And that's, oh man, what are you talking about? I thought this millennium was all perfect. Everybody's, you know, happy and, you know, you know, doing parties and we're all hanging out with Christ, you know. But at the end, not all the people are righteous still. That's why, like he says, outside are the dogs and those who practice a lie and those who commit sorceries. You're not allowed in my space. This is Israel. This is my gates. You're not allowed in here. Nothing that practices. That's why he says outside is those who are weeping and gnashing of teeth. A lot of people equate that to hell. So I don't think so. Now, I do believe that there is a hell, but I believe what he is referencing with the weeping and the gnashing of teeth is people crying, I want to get into Jerusalem, people gnashing their teeth. That's really like people yelling. They're angry. They're gnashing their teeth. They're yelling. They're blaspheming or whatever. But again, I don't know everything. I just have an idea of how of how some of these scriptures might be applied during the millennium. There's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of secrets that, you know, that are very interesting that we need to definitely explore some more. Um, but do I think the millennium is going to be great? Yes, for the most of us. But is everybody going to be wonderful? No, I don't think so. Because there's even scriptures that talk about those who don't come up and worship me during the Feast of Tabernacles. There's no rain sent on your land and such and such. There's, mm -hmm. I can't get into them all right now because there's a thousand different ways to take this. But I think the millennium is just a rejuvenation period for the earth before the eventual eternal state where everything becomes perfect. There's no temple. The, the new Jerusalem comes down on the earth and we all live happily ever after. Yeah. So that's what I think. No, that makes sense. Uh, Cause you know, when we look at Re revelation, uh, was it revelation? Revelation 20, 22, somewhere there. Uh, it refers to uh, us being judges. Uh, with the Lord yeah. coming back. And so uh, that makes sense. And so um, I do appreciate you uh, coming on tonight and, and being a part uh, of Daily Excellence and uh, you know telling us about your channel. And uh, this dialogue that we had this evening, uh, you know, getting your perspective. Uh, I always see you in the in the chat room like, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> it's going like yeah. this. Like, I just need to bring that guy on so he can uh, tell, uh, you know, get, get a chance to, uh, you know, uh, speak your opinion on things and so uh, but you know I, I think uh, it, it was a good interview tonight I think uh, it was a great learning experience for a lot of us definitely things to ponder on as we uh, go through the, this season uh, and season to come and of course you know as always I tell everyone hey do your own research uh, you know don't take it from my word don't take it from uh, you know Joseph's word don't take it from anyone's word but do your own research uh, yeah, and see what God reveals to you. So, well, Brother Joseph, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Uh, we're glad to have you uh, with us this evening. And of course, if you guys haven't done so yet, uh, make sure uh, that you guys uh, subscribe over to Brother Joseph's channel at Revelation Station over on YouTube and uh, be a part of what he's doing over there. Get get uh, hit that bell. Get those notifications when that new video uh, is uh, the, uh, those new videos come out. And so, uh, with that being said, everyone, one last thing, just a reminder that tomorrow night is Pastor Talk uh, with myself and my wife. We'll be here at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time, five o'clock Central, uh, and so devote time of devotional, family time here on Daily Excellence. And of course, uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can put those in the chat room while we're live. We'll pray for those at the end of the evening there and so but with that being said everyone hey don't forget to give this video a like share subscribe check out uh brother joseph at revelation station his links are in the description below and with that being said have a great rest of your evening god bless you and we'll see you tomorrow right here on daily excellence with
pastor talk. Have a good evening, everyone. Get out of here.